Teachers love options, and the ViewSonic flat panel board is exactly the interactive board that is going to give you as many options to display your digital content as possible. I'm going to walk you through a five different ways that you can cast or show whatever it is that you want to show your audience digitally. And we're going to start with the board itself. We're going to start with Chromium. If it doesn't show up at the top of your list here, you can click that down arrow and find it in the list that is here. You can move it by holding and dragging any of these. So Chromium, when you click on it, it usually will open up to Google. If it doesn't, you can go ahead and you can just type in google.com. When that comes up, you're going to be able to sign in. And when you sign in and click your waffle, you're going to see that you have all the options that you normally do on your laptop. So at this point, you may see something when you click on it, like Google Drive, that may look a little bit different. You gotta remember that these ViewSonic boards think that they are giant cell phones. That's what they think they are, giant Android devices. So if you don't like the look of this, you can click those three dots in the top right hand corner and now switch it back to request desktop site. That's gonna give us back to what we are typically used to seeing. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to do this, especially if you're doing Google Slides. I've seen that come up quite a bit um, with people. Also Google Sheets. Option number two, you can use an HDMI cable. If you put in an HDMI cable into the right side of the board, into HDMI one or two, and then plug the opposite end into your computer, it's going to display whatever is on your computer. There's only one other thing that you're gonna to want to have, and that is a USB cord that allows for touch capabilities. And this is what that cord looks like. This one end goes into the back on the right hand side of the ViewSonic board. And then the other one is just a USB and that's going to go into your computer as well. That's gonna give you the capability of touch. So just remember that the HDMI cord is gonna give you the visual that you're looking for. The USB is going to give you the capability to touch. But again, you are connected to your computer. So that was way number two that you can display. The third way that we can go ahead and display something is with AirTame. And you can see that we have AirTame hooked up on this particular board. It says it right here. And if it doesn't say AirTame, you can try clicking on HDMI 2 on your board and see if your AirTame is hooked up. So in order to have AirTame work, you obviously have to have an AirTame, which is hooked up behind the ViewSonic board. And then you have to have AirTame on your device as well. If for some reason you don't have AirTame on your device, I'm going to show you how to do it right here. You're going to go to the Windows button. You're going to click on All Apps, and you're going to find where it says Software Center. When you click on Software Center, you're going to be able to download AirTame for yourself on your computer. Now, once it's downloaded, which mine is right here, you're going to be able, once I click on AirTame, you're going to be able to click on it. You're going to be able to share your screen or share a window just by clicking on that device. And you can see that my screen is now up here on the ViewSonic board. The only problem that I have with it is that, again, there is no touch capability when you go ahead and use this method of AirTame. Everything that's controlled is from your device itself. So that was option number three. Option number four takes us back to the home screen. And we have an icon here called My View Board Display. As I click that, I have to go to myviewboard.com slash display. And you can see on my screen, I'm doing that as well. And so I have to put in the display code, which I already pre-did. And then I have to type in the one-time passcode. Now, if I let it go past the time here, it's going to refresh this code. So I'm going to wait just a second, let it refresh itself, and I'm going to put this code in. I'm going to hit next. And then I can choose what I would like to allow to be shared with my view board. I can use a Chrome tab, a Windows tab, or the entire screen. I'm going to pick the entire screen and actually click on it. 
and then I'm going to click share. You may, if you're watching a video, want to make sure to use that toggle of share system audio at the bottom as well. This does not give us touch capability, but once again, you are able to wirelessly display anything that you have from your device up to the ViewSonic board. And that was number four. Last but certainly not least is my favorite way to go ahead and cast. On our board, we're going to scroll and we're going to find where it says VCast. It looks like a little V with a quarter of a circle inside of it. We're going to click that. And then this comes up right here. On your device, you're going to go back to Software Center. And I'm going to show you what to download so that you can cast from your device very, very easily. We're going to go to Software Center. We're going to find the software that says VCast Sender. You're going to go ahead and install this onto your computer. You can take that icon and you can pin it into your tray down below. But when I click on this, it's going to give me a code. And I'm going to go ahead and put that code in straight from my screen. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Cast. Now, why is this one of my favorite ways to cast? Well, what's really good about this is that it is touchscreen. So I have it on my computer or device that I'm using where I can use my mouse. As you can see it, I'm moving it back and forth. I can go ahead and touch the address bar up top and type in the web address that I need to go to. Once I have that in, everything again is able to be touched and whenever I touch it on the screen it's going to come up on my device screen as well. So by far this is going to be the most useful way for you to get whatever's on your actual device onto your screen and still have the maximum amount of capability in order to have your students interact with your lesson. If you have any questions about the five ways that you can go ahead and display your digital content on your ViewSonic board, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help and we can get you set up in any of those five ways so that your lesson is getting delivered the way that you want.